Hello everybody, this is Gregory with 5-Minute Catholic Apologetics, where 5 minutes of your time may get you to the divine. Today we're going to do an episode retorting to the accusation that the Catholic Church is a cult. Now before we begin, let's start with a prayer. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancti, Amen. Gloria Patris et Filii et Spiritui Sancta, Sucutura in Principio et Nuca et Semper et Seculae Seculorum. Amen. This is a not, I wouldn't say like top 10 accusation done by Protestants or fallen away Catholics or atheists that the Catholic Church is a cult, but it is a kind of ad hominem attack that you commonly hear. And now before we begin, as you can tell, I've moved <laughs> clearly and I'm trying out different rooms to see where the best lighting and so forth is. So please be patient. All right. So what do you say when people accuse the Catholic Church of a cult? Now, the modern interpretation or definition of a cult is different than the ancient definition of a cult. And you can certainly see the word cult being used in ancient times. But we're going to be talking about the modern view. And the modern view of a cult, and you can look this up, it typically has a couple of features. One, it's a small group that tends to be very insulated and bubbled from the outside world. It's typically an organization that has a strong ruling woman or man, a megalomaniac who has a Svengali uh, uh, spin on them or a Svengali uh, ability to manipulate and control them. It's typically a group that stays and doesn't do a lot of outward acts. And it's typically a group that is very suspicious of the outside world and, and as such does no or very little works of mercy, works of charity. So when we think of cults, especially if you're my age, you think of the Branch Davidians, David Koresh, what happened in Waco. You think, even if you're older, Jonestown with the Pastor Jones who took his congregation to Guyana and then he made them all drink the Kool-Aid. It was poison and spiked and they all died for him. And he actually had a, a, a house representative murdered who went to go investigate. You think of these, these cults, the one where they thought that the alien ships were coming behind the comet so they all killed themselves and they were found in bunk beds wearing Nike sneakers, the uh, Heaven's Gate, I think it was a cult. That's what you think of cults. So how is the Catholic Church not a cult? Well, first of all, typical definition of a cult, it's a small group. The Catholic Church is the largest Christian organization, denomination, group, whatever you want to talk, in the world. We have over a billion people. So we don't qualify as that. Also, we, we don't insulate ourselves and keep ourselves in a protective us and are suspicious of the world. We are out and about. We, we practice what's, what's said in, in the New Testament under what Jesus said and what Paul said about evangelizing the entire world, what First Peter said as well, that we go out and evangelize. We invented the university system. We invented orphanages and hospitals, and we preached the word of Christ to the entire world. We had churches in pretty much every war district ghetto of the world. So we're very out there. You know, regardless of what you think of Pope Francis, the papacy is very out there. It's not like nobody knows about the Catholic Church. Everybody knows about the Catholic Church. We don't have a megalomaniac leader who has a Spengali appeal on us. If anything, in the Catholic Church, it's the opposite. I mean, everybody, of course, recognizes, well, I would say everybody, because they are a set of canons, but most people, of course, recognize that the, the Pope, the Pope Francis is our Pope. But, you know, we've talked about a lot of liberal Catholics, and I have that episode, there's no such thing as liberal Catholics. A lot of liberal Catholics just ignore church teaching on a host of things, abortion, contraception, uh, for example, in terms of like their personal lives, uh, real presence of the Eucharist, uh, and, and so forth. So it's it's not like the Pope is David Koresh. You know, David Koresh had very small followers, and not to mention a lot of the cults have uh, sexual permissiveness and licentiousness going around. I mean, that's pretty common too. But it keep you keep some you you keep them in a small like confined area, and you just keep pushing to them essentially that trust me. They're extremely, exceedingly charismatic people. Trust me, trust me, the outside world wants to convince you otherwise. Don't listen to the outside world, and you tend to believe that. The Catholic Church is very outward. We've always been very outward. In cults, lots of times you can't go to their services. 
Catholic church, you can walk into any Catholic church and go to their service. I mean, the, the Catholic parish is not like the Protestants where you know they're going to shake your hand and welcome you and everybody knows. And uh, You can go in. Nobody cares who you are when you go to a Catholic parish. So we are not a cult on any way, shape, or level. And I would tell when people, if they accuse the Catholic church of being a cult, just say, brother, look up the definition of a cult. We don't qualify as that at, at, at all. Now, are there certain Protestant denominations that would be deemed cults? Sure, the Jehovah's, the Mormons, the Seventh-day Adventists, partly because they believe in very radical conception of mainstream Christianity, which is the Trinity, for example. And of course, Protestants took that from the Catholic Church. We gave them that gift, go to that episode on that. But they have very radical beliefs. And look, like with the Mormons, for example, the Mormon missionaries, they are taught when they go out, you cannot interact with anybody else. You cannot read any newspapers from that country. The only time you can be away from your missionaries is when you go to the bathroom. Uh, you know, they don't allow a lot of contact with your own family. And this is to keep them in a bubble and isolate. So they're evangelizing, but they still keep themselves in a bubble. So that's not to say there's anything wrong with you know, Mormonism per se. The theology is wacky. We have an episode here on that a long time ago. But uh, the people are good. But that's, that's an example of, of it. And you certainly see that also, too, with the Jehovah's and the Adventists is at the Watchtower Agency for the Jehovah's, for example, keep a very tight lid on it. And you, t you tend to see these groups tend to be smaller and they congregate together and they kind of have almost like, a, like an intelligence espionage agency around each other where they can't leave, you can't leave, you can't leave. And uh, if you leave, of course, there's a lot of shame and so forth. There's this, this feedback loop uh, to keep everybody intact. And also they tend to be more suspicious of the outside world. And look, don't, don't you know, with the secular world we live in, I don't blame them but they tend to be exceedingly suspicious of the outside world. But you know, regardless of what you think of the theology, I'm not saying that they're bad people. I'm just saying that if anybody can be conceived a cult, it's gonna be those kind of more radically Christian interpretations uh, of groups than anyone else. And certainly you might know, especially in small towns, uh, very small churches that are more of the cult mentality. So when you think of cults, think of David Koresh. Think of Jim Jones. Don't think the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is outward. It's out there and does not fulfill the definition of a cult. Guys, please post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Please hit the notification, subscribe, and share by and share with like-minded people. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.